probably deal with this first. I sent this thing it off. Now I'll keep hold of that because these always come in handy. that was or the button that was attaching to the switch. I think this is a large metal button but it was connecting to this tiny little switch which seems standard for these sorts of boards. So what I will be doing is having a look see if I can replace this switch with the bigger one. Now the grommet in there, now gone. The grommet is there and as I was surmising I was right. The grommet had actually split. So when the batteries were forcing up onto the pin it was just getting split on this and shorting out. Which is what caused the original one to fail. So a bit for the bin. This head might see use at some point in the future and I'm sure the case will as well. Back in a sec when I know what I'm going to do with the rest of it. Alright so we're back for another week and as you can see I have the, um, the Darwin again laid out before me. Now I was looking at this last week and uh, what I'm going to do um, today is just look at uh, testing um, to see whether this is actually worth um, taking forward in terms of a, a rebuild. Um, in order to do that what I'm going to do is take these battery packs off and blah 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 disconnect it and we're going to mock up um, with a new uh, little battery pack and some 18650s um, a power supply into there uh, just to, to test um, the board's functioning. I'm going to temporarily wire up a, uh, a little push button switch on there, um, blah blah blah, so we can see how we go. See whether this is actually worth looking at um, first and foremost. I'm playing with some new toys today, and very happy bunny, very very happy bunny today. Um, I don't know, you obviously know I'm a fan of the Bose uh, cartomizers, and um, I see uh, a little ad from. Toby at iVapor, and he was doing these, and you can see in there, they're pre-slotted car toes. Doesn't excite a lot of people. For me, I think they're going to be good. <laughs> they vape very, very well. Um, nice and quick to change over, and all the usual from you. The reason I'm, I'm excited about that, or the reason I have a little bit of excitement, um, is when I ordered these from our Toby and um, when my three packs of, of Cartos turned up um, it landed next door and I thought crikey that's a bit of a package to be sort of landing next door um, but the reason it was quite a package is because within there there are a couple of these mid sours and one of these bad boys. A little uh, little mid with all the connecting to PC destructions and all that sort of stuff. Now, it's not for me, um, but on the bottom of my, my invoice was this. So that's going in the pot for the children in need auction. So thank you very, very much, Toby, if you're watching this. As well as that, I received a massive package containing 
300 mil 300 mil of, uh, of scorpion blood from Mido um, for the children in Eretford as well. I will be doing an update on that at some point, but thank you very, very much, Milo and Toby. Much appreciated, and um, we'll make the raffle pot look so much more attractive. As you can see, I've got a chunk of old settee that I've put down here to be working on. A um, little bit of leather going on as well. Let's, um, let's start taking a look at this, um, and the first thing that I'm going to do uh, is I've, I've got the iron heating up. I've still got to learn how to use that focus. It's been far too long. Um, but on the back end of here is your little USB charging board that sits down on the base of the batteries. And those two wires literally do run up through to there. Now I'm going to leave those in situ at the moment. But what I am going to do is just heat my iron up, tin it up ever so slightly, bring in some pliers. I'm just going to relieve this battery pack off the unit. Oops, stuff in the way. Just so I can get that out of the way. So there's my battery pack disconnected. And one of the things I'm going to have a look at on this is I'm going to uh, just take off this tape that's on the back end of here and really start taking this pack apart because what I want to see obviously is how these two are actually teamed up because before we can duplicate a new battery pack we've obviously got to see how these two have been wired together which might be easier said than done so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go, oh, I might not have to go away. Obviously I'm being careful with these because one of them has already gone wonky donkey. As you can see, effectively, what we've got is our two minuses together and our two pluses together. So effectively they'll be giving, this is what I wanted to know realistically, um, is, is, is feeding, if you like, a single bolt source. So uh, when the batteries are configured in this format, um, pretty much what I've got to do is take my, my negs off here, which means I can use a single battery, get a, a, a decent battery on a decent charge, chuck it through there and get power to the board in its new format. What this has done realistically, it's not stacking the cells, it's, it's running the pause to pause, neg to neg, and, and you're getting the same, you know, end voltage out, as it were, rather than a combination of both voltages. Let me go away, um, wire up a, a battery pack, and I'll come back, we'll attach it on, and, uh, and see where we go. And there we go, we are back in the room once again. Um, it does appear that we seem to be holding the stream relatively okay um, ish um, I'm not going to tempt any fate on that whatsoever so I'm going to crack on into our first air break Liberty Flight sponsors 10 year tip with Gary Dibley
Ray Weber and Ray Weber Alexa. Best in Yorkshire for your AC needs. That's iweber.co.uk and iweber-alexa.co.uk. Ray Weber and Ray Weber-alexa.co.uk. Proud sponsors of webertrails.tv. Flights sponsors 10 year tip with Gary Dibley. And there we go, we are back in the room once again. Um, need longer air breaks, most definitely. Um, I've just run over and, and checked the, the usage so far, and, and based on the estimation, we should use about a gig of data, I think, putting this out. Um, it appears to be holding steady, um, fingers crossed. However, I do notice that when for some reason I'm on, um, it goes through the roof. Um, so I'm going to try and keep my bit to a minimum this week. Um, less waffle and more video. Uh, let's crack on with uh, my little next bit of, uh, of the dissection of the Darwin. Right, so I've got a, uh, like a double battery holder. Um, now, I'm only going to use one cell on this. So I'm going to keep my pos pin that's connected down to my pos wire here. Um, and I've got a neg pin which is effectively bridged across here um, so you can, you know, when you run the, vol the, the batteries in, in its standard format you're effectively uh, doubling up the voltage that's going out. I only want a single cell because um, I don't want to chuck too much voltage through the Darwin. Um, a single cell such as this should be enough to uh, sort of test fire up the board and, and check that it's all working. If th there isn't a fault with the board now, obviously, we don't know whether there's been a problem with the board, which is why the battery pack went. So at this moment in time, what we're trying to do is, is effectively prove that the, the gubbins of the mod are working um, before we even remotely look at look at a repair. The problem has been with with our with, like, with our power pack. So let me just um, I've got a, a wire here. Let me just tin this one up. And all I'm going to do is just drop that down. You have to excuse me, you won't be able to see what I'm doing here. Just drop it down inside on a little wire there. So effectively what I'm doing is, is cutting pos and neg off the one battery. Let me just drop a battery in there. And I'm just going to run a test meter across the leads just so I can check that I've got a voltage going out. don't at the moment, for some bizarre reason, sometimes these can be a bit stiff in there to make a contact. Do you know what, it would help greatly if I put the battery in the holder that I've just wired up. I now have voltage. What a donkey. So I've got my little battery pack there that I'm going to wire up. And uh, obviously I need to make sure when I'm putting the cell in, it's going in the correct one. Uh, I've got my Darwin board that I'm just going to bring back in now, which I've still got my, uh, if you like, my USB charging circuit attached to. And there's also a very good reason for that. Um, I'm going to uh, chuck a USB lead in just to check the charge and all that sort of thing if it fires up. I'm just going to go ahead now and um, attach my temporary battery pack onto the board. And it's exactly the same sort of config as it was when it you know come off. So pause over there with a the pause. Neg over here with a neg. Yep. So I've got my temporary uh, temporary gubbins linked up with my temporary box. What I'm going to do is run a battery in, um, and then, uh, Dad, if you remember, what you see last week there should be the actual firing switch, um, which is located here on the board. Um, which is missing, however I do have that here. 
Now, I may well try and connect this back on, or for a temporary fix, what I might try and do is uh, put a little, um, a very temporary um, switch on there, uh, just to test firing and, and things like that. So let's just uh, pop a battery in to see first whether we have life in our Darwin. Now I did see, oh, I did see then a glimmer of, uh, of life. I've got my battery charge and I'm turning what's up and down. So in terms of our display doing what it should do, we're looking quite funky. What I'm going to do is go away, prep up a switch. Um, I'll put back in two. And we've managed to remove the board from its plastic housing, which it was hot glued in its place with. Unfortunately, they hadn't thought to hot glue the casing into place. If they had, probably would have worked a lot better. So, it's a standard setup for this type of board. You've got your positive and negative to the battery, and an output to the atomizer positive. There's no negative to the atomizer because that all ran through the case. So I'll have to run two wires to this, one to the battery and one up to the atomizer shouldn't be a problem and what I'm planning on doing is desoldering these wires and replacing them with my own well, I mean most probably the wires coming directly from the battery holder to this so in fact I think I'll get the vice out for this this might make life a bit easier to get everything. I'll just gently hold this in place. Slightly so it can focus. And luckily, the board itself is marked so I know which way it goes where. Wires off and ready for again. Now I need to work on this. So if I work this as the bottom of the case, I'm going to have the two wires coming up to around about here, I reckon. Snip those off. So with the two wires, I'm just going to tin them up and I'm trying to attach them to this board. to there. And negative to the other side. I 
think so. And there you have a basic circuit. But I need a wire now to the atomizer. So there'll be two wires going straight up to the atomizer. One from here and one from here. But that won't be until I'm ready to put everything in at the boat in case I think because I need a hole for the atomizer before I wire it up. Next thing I want to have a look at is the switch. Now, as you'll see, the connections on this switch are absolutely tiny. So I'm not going to have a massive amount of room to work here. So I'm going to use the two bits of wire I had left over from the battery. And what I'm intending to do is leave this switch in place and just solder wires onto the contacts. And because I don't know how this switch is wired up on the board, it's hard to tell from what it is. I'm going to leave the switch in place and just connect it to it. That way I know it's definitely going to work. So the way this one will work is one pin on each side is operational. So the top two pins are connected to each other and the bottom two are connected to each other. So if I connect one wire to the top pin on one side and one way there's bottom pin on the other side that will work for the switch like I said it's incredibly small work so I'm just going to get these well tinned as before very carefully try and solder to these points or not hmm. now the points are far too small on that so what I'm going to end up using is just use the switch as it is I think so that's, that's out and we're back to using that with this which I'm assuming if it's set up properly should work fine but we shall see back with the drill right I've rigged up my um, switch and you see we're still working on the board there um, now I've looked at reasons as to why I didn't have a full display and um, I've got a feeling it is something to do with obviously the way that this, the pins are configured on this on this particular switch um, I've got a theory I'll have to test that but one of the problems I've got when I uh, tin these up I was uh, aiming to put the original switch back on when I tinned up um, where this switch had been broken off ever such a tiny thing where it had actually been broken off the board it, it come to me in pieces um, one of the actual tracks is is damaged and, and almost not there at all shall we say on the actual board itself um, I've looked into a way of where I can position this switch to sort of get us running um, for a test um, and that is going to be across these the middle and uh, an outer pin um, purely to, to test now what that won't give us the functions of is is if you if you mean the, the automatic ohm reading and this and the other um, that will only come into effect when the switch is pushed 
I need to investigate whether there is another point um, anywhere on the board that I can take, um, you know, bridge across for for a uh, for a switch um, to go in there. So not ideal, but uh, but we're sort of winning ever so slightly. I'm going to tack the switch that I've got on now um, ever so carefully, and it's ever so fiddly and ever so tiny. So I'm just tacking that on now. I've got to be careful of this button. So you see what you're doing is, is bloody incredible on these. Come on, Dibley. I need my glasses. I haven't, well, I haven't got any. I need glasses. I also need a new sponge for my solder. Right. Let me go around there. There we go. So I'm just for a battery in. Test that I'm cold. Yeah, so it's, it's sort of going to work the way that I thought. Um, what I'm going to do very, very quickly is let's piece this back um, as it would go back together. doesn't know which way to do it. Okay. I'm going this way. And I'm just gonna sort of piece it back together as, as it would go in the uh, in the ding dong. I've got to get my spring down in here. I know this is ever so rubbish. The little spring's gotta go down in, in this section down in there. bearing that I've got to set in there, which is a bugger, absolute arse, because it's magnetic the base of this, unfortunately you can't exactly see what I'm doing. fiddliest little bloody things I've ever done. And you see that ball bearing. It just wants to be attracted to everything other than where it should be sitting. Let's try a different tag. There you go. Because I've got my board in. I've got that in. I'm going to sit this down ever so slightly. And I'm just popping my wires through where my case would go. Uh, where the other bit would go. I'm going to pop the wires through the bottom for my battery holder. And there we go, we are back in the room once again. We really do seem to be holding. Hopefully, uh, I did notice a few people had, um, had a few problems with the connection. I don't know what that was. It hopefully wasn't this end. I'm rock solid on, on the little new little dongly thing. It's great. Um, I, I wanted it for me. Uh, I'm going to keep it. It's one of those things. It's really tiny. It's like the size of a... A little um, what you call them, iPod thing, about the size of that. Um, mobile 4G, stick it in your pocket, take your iPad and connect. It is good stuff, I tell you. Outside broadcast, here we come, um, especially in the summer. Um, I did notice there was a question that popped up in chat. Um, I'm going to take that one now and then we'll pop in some ad breaks. Um, somebody said, Why he's a newbie and he said, Why do you tin your tip? Um, effectively on your solder iron you've got the spongy thing which has got water in that's used for cleaning your tip you tin your tip purely to aid the flow of solder to what you're working on um, you don't want to tin it too much so you've got a damn great blob hanging off the end of it um, just a little tin around the tip it will shine it up work clean it off tin again work um, it, it, if you leave it there for too long the solder will boil on on the end and it's, it's not that usable so you have to work quite quickly with an iron clean your tip little bit of tin on the piece that you're working with and feed your solder in jobs are good i think we have done we have done a little bit about that in that in one of the shows um 
if you don't want to see that in a bit more detail we can certainly put that together for you uh, let's pop into a second hour break I'll be back very shortly after this Liberty Flight sponsors 10 year tip with Gary Dibley Um, the one thing that I will say is uh, pretty much just filling in on, on the soldering thing. Um, when when I was working on uh, the Darwin, the, the stuff that I'm doing there, I'm really just, it's, they're not good solder joints. They are purely tacked on for, for testing. Um, if you want to test them, it, it can be very easy to tack, tack on. But when you're making a joint, you need to make sure, obviously, that you've you got the, your flow of solder and it's actually gone where it should do. You can actually see it and see it when it sets. Um, you don't want any sort of uh, we call dry joints. Um, dry joints cause problems in mods, um, but obviously, so take your time um, as much as you can. Let's get back to Mark's final little bit of his of his mod repair, um, and then we'll go into my thoughts on the Darwin. We're still holding out. I'm, I'm quite shocked by this. Uh, coming to you by the courtesy of a, a nice man in Tesco's with the last remaining mobile 4G unit thing in stock. Thank you very much. Here we go. So I've roughly marked out where I want my two holes to go. And it's just going to be a matter of drilling with the pilot drill first. out to 1130 seconds which is pretty much perfect for the atomizer connector and I think this one should be around about a quarter of an inch which is around about there. That's the best way to tell us so I'll try with a switch. sitting there nicely. I 
Be careful to watch out for the loose bits of metal which I have to clean up. That will sit through that hole nicely so it won't come out. And we're good to go. So now we just need to clean up. So I've added the wires to the atomizer connector and just super glued it in place just to hold it for now. So now I just need to solder these two wires onto the board. And we'll start with a positive, I think. And in fact, I'm going to reuse the base to hold it in place, otherwise it becomes a nightmare trying to solder to these things. pre-tinned and obviously the connection is still tinned from where it was before. So it just becomes a matter of touching the two together basically. And the awkward one is going to be our negative. do that, the wires come apart of course. This will pop down over this hole. And the switch keeps in switch with the button in place, I should say. That will line up like that, and I'm just going to add a bit of epoxy to hold everything in place. I'll pop back when I've done that. Now as you'll see I've added epoxy putty to the base to hold the battery holder in place. I did a bit around the 510 connector to firm it up and just added a lump here to hold this board up against the switch. Now if I've got everything right and I put the batteries in it should work. Hopefully you'll be able to see the red light was flashing there meaning that it's working. I press it three times you get a blue and red light which rather strangely on this the red light means 3.7 volts the red and blue light appears to mean 4 volts and then when you go to the blue light that's 4.7, 4.8 volts it's a very strange setup but there you go when you go back to red and blue and back to red. So, if I close this off, you will see that this is overhanging a bit, so a lot of things won't screw on. I'm gonna have to try and knock this back a bit, maybe just cut out the lip around this bit so things fit on better. But for now, whew. 
with the spring loaded connector this uh, Vivinova tank has it still works on top if I can like so what I do is test that this comes where it should it's going to pop a couple of screws in to hold one at the top, one at the bottom sorry if this is all asked about face but it's sort of so fiddly this thing and all we're doing is, is obviously testing that this is sort of going to work, sort of in theory, if you get me. Before we decide whether it's worth ordering additional battery packs. Right. So I've got that on there. And I've got my Darwin Doodah hopefully working as it should. Stick battery in. Probably. Okay. So I've got my external power supply running through my Darwin in the case. Turn on and the uh, the, the normal if you like Darwin arm function is, is working. It's not gonna be working perfectly because I've got lots of crap in the way. What should normally happen with the Darwin is, is when that is on, um, when you screw an Etty on, when it's on it should automatically read the uh, resistance and this out of the Etty. Got a feeling that that is only going to work now when I press this switch to fire. Let me just crank the old bit on there. Let's go, uh, six, 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 three or whatever. Hit me button and you'll see hopefully all the, the bits and pieces. This is purely because the bit or, or the leg that's missing off, off the switch um, element of the board, I've had to bridge across the others to, to get a connection and that is only then when I'll kick in and you can see my battery drop rapidly off there as well. Let me just have a chug on this. So it's working. Not that good. Amazing. Really nice bear kit. So yeah, I've got to try and work out whether I, there's another another bit of board I can take a, a, a switch off for a, a switch, a new leg for um, the switch. But if you don't mind it working like that, you got to press it to get your resistance and stuff. I can't see it making much of a difference if this is a piece together to get it working. It's obviously been damaged to buggery and this that, and the other. Obviously, you know you wouldn't want to carry that around. Um, this is just purely to prove that this is working um, before, yeah, you know, given the option of of getting a new pack. Um, it's all working as it should switchy things working obviously it's, it's a bit flappy and floppy because it's it's not fully linked where it should do external switch because that's been snapped off the board but it's sort of living again sort of living again where we take this now is is really going to be down to to obviously the owner um, if it was mine um, and I could rig up a switch as this is, I'd be more than happy that if me watts are working and this and the other. I can't, obviously the resistance thing is, is, is good, but in terms of getting it working again, you know, it's, it's gonna do the job. It's not gonna constantly read now how that's gonna affect. I might talk to, to Brandon and, and, and see what he suggests, but um, we've got a temporary rig up and it's, uh, and it's going. 
Um, it's not a full repair, but I will see what the uh, what the guy wants to do with it. And um, it's definitely here. I tell you, it's hitting hard. Um, back to me in the studio. And there we go. We are back in the room once again. Um, yeah, so the uh, nice mod by Mark, by the way, um, like that, like the tin, um, particularly like the comment from Jeff as well, which I won't repeat um, live on there. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's working. The the Darwin is is working. It lives again. Um, I'm waiting some feedback. I've got to talk to the owner to find out exactly what they want to do with that. Now, me personally, I would love to tie that with a new bit of kit I've got arriving for the workshop. Um, which is, uh, I've got a little um, a, a vice that I can fit onto the bottom of the pillar drill, um, which has wheels that will allow me to spin it either. So I can put a solid lump of wood in there and start milling very, very carefully. Um, fully understand that you shouldn't put sort of cross pressure on a, uh, on a pillar drill, um, but I've seen this done and if I take it slowly, it should be okay. So hoping to, to sort of mill out a chunk of wood for a box and put that in there if possible um don't know so we'll have to see if, if they uh if they more it's, it's coops that one coops is uh, one of the moderators on uk vapors that is his mod that we are working on we've held a solid signal sort of issue we had one little blip um uh, so we, we've been good. I don't want to tempt fate um, much further. Um, but coming up this week, um, obviously Marco is away on holiday. So tomorrow night is um, Team Talk. Um, on uh, Just straight after that, there's DE Talk. Um, then on Wednesday, we have VT Talk. Um, followed on Thursday by the Haze Hour. Obviously, uh, IY4 Radio um, is around on Friday. Um, and I'm not sure, but uh, I'm assuming that Mr. Kitson will be back on Sunday. If he's not, there'll be something impromptu again. Um, I'm going to call it a night. Uh, we are pretty much at 9 o'clock, uh, 10 o'clock. Totally lost all track of time today. Running around like a loony trying to find um, uh, something to, to get us up and running tonight. So hopefully it's been, been worth it. Um, with all that said, I am going to sign out and uh, I will catch you next week. Cheers, guys. Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley.